not at all. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest here. Sitting to my right is an incredible vocalist, recording artist, producer, dancer, pianist. She also happens to be one of my dearest friends. Also, more recently, it has just been announced that she is a now Stone's Throw signed recording artist. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Michi. Thank you so much. (laughs) Did you just fart? (laughs) No, actually. What the hell is going on? You know... (laughs) It was the couch, but it's... (laughs) Okay, you know, I knew that this was going to go off the rails. I thought it was going to be 45 seconds. And it was only 20. Michi also has the world record for uh, the most times riding the roller coaster Goliath. (laughs) Unofficial. Yes. uh, 23, 20... 26 times? I'm going to walk off set. 26, okay. It's made up. Because last time you said it was 32 times. When I was 19, I tried to break the world record for how many times riding Goliath in a row. It was like 38. Wait. And I did it 32 times. It, okay, that's what it was. It's 36. I believe the record Why is 36. And I wrote it 32, 32 times. times. Yes. Uh, actually, my second job, my first job was uh, at Sweet Factory, the candy shop. Second job was at uh, Six Flags. I was a parade dancer. And oh. the uh, entertainment crew went around to different Southern California <laughs> high schools and they auditioned dancers. And oh. um, I was one of like 15 to to get paid minimum wage <laughs> dancing <laughs> in like 100 degree nice. weather nice but that is neither here nor there oh no that is very here and there because um see one of the things i wanted to talk about with you that i think is really interesting is that not only have you managed to have a pretty successful recording career thus far but you actually started out as a dancer correct. which is really dope correct yeah um growing up yeah i was uh always passionate about dance shout out to my mom for putting me in dance classes at three and then years later aligned in music and so what's really exciting in my visuals for this next project is i am dancing in my visuals and i'm kind of low-key using my music platform as an excuse in disguise to really just have uh, a platform to showcase that I'm an actual professional trained dancer. There you go. Very dope. Uh, but yeah, I think something in art that's really cool is like the misdirect is like a, something I'm really about. Like that is like a really cool thing to do, like artistically to present yourself in a certain way and actually have these other things that are happening that are maybe not as obvious. Totally. But I think I think you've kind of achieved that, you know. Oh, yeah. And I think on this on this next record and you know, when the visuals come out and, and people see you've got choreo in there, you know, they're yeah, gonna see your your dancing your ass I'm off. I'm really, so. really excited about it. I feel like there's also a wave in music right now, especially amongst um, you know, female uh acts where it kind of reminds me of like 90s R&B times, Y2K, your right. Britney's, your Christina's that were not just singing and looking hot, but also like had backup dancers. Triple threats. Of, triple threats. Triple threats. You know who does it really well right now is um, Tyla. Mm. Tyla. Or like even the, the visuals for Jungle. All of their music videos are so dope. They have amazing dancers. Shout out to Will West. I think like dance goes hand in hand with uh, portraying the music and like building that world. So it's just really exciting to kind of like have the alignment of my project in this kind of like resurgence of dance having it shine in the medium of music too. Yeah. I think something else you do really well. There's a lot of things you do very well. Michi's a very multi hyphenated artist and has a lot of skills. No, no, you do. Um, But, um, well, now you made me lose my train of thought, but the, but, but, but but one of them is that uh, you also you also do play piano very well. Oh no! You do actually. I I have a lot of potential to tap in. I appreciate that. You play pretty well. Oh, you play thank very you. well. Yeah. Thank you. You you actually have like really like like good technique, which is surprising, given that you don't do it all the time. 
Thank you. I also have pretty, um, like, long fingers. I have pretty big hands that are pretty <laughs> good for piano, right? Oh, <laughs> 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 Horrible for finding a mate, but great for playing piano. I'm Michi's best friend. I can make that joke. <laughs> um, but, no, I appreciate that. I've, I've started playing piano at age four, and I had same thing. I think it's my attention span... Um, and like discipline always felt very punishing to me. So it was kind of intimidating. Um, <laughs> and I also was allergic to my first piano teacher's, um, cat. So I would like get asthma attacks and like sneeze the entire time. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. you were the most <laughs> like, it's like the You're tights gave me anxiety. <laughs> the cat gave me a- a- asthma. <laughs> Literally. And um, so I... Such a I, physically temperamental child. Absolutely. Super sen- hypersensitive. <laughs> but you know what? Like, one thing I do appreciate... Okay, actually, I want to know this. The gave me anxiety. Were your, Sorry. I know that you were always, like, called, obviously, to piano, and your parents were, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, encouraging of it. Yes. Were your parents ever, like, strict on you for it? Or were they very, never. like, hands-off? Never. Pun not intended. Never once. They never forced me to do anything cool um yeah yeah because i went through seasons with piano where my mom it really encouraged it i think she valued like you know the focus of it me having different outlets of creativity but also instilling discipline into my life but there were seasons where i just like did not want to take piano lessons and i do appreciate that my mom was very like hands off and allowed that like flow but I've always come back to piano and you know in like my life sets that I did this past year I haven't played a show in a year if I can slip this in I'm playing the regent this month I'm opening uh Friday August 30th for Duran Jones and the Indications so it's a big show Big show. I'm very, very That's going to be so I fun. Know. I'm very, very excited. Damn. Playing a bunch of new music off the record. The Regent Theater is really lit, excited. too. They just, like, they all their stuff's updated. Their the sound lighting. system. They're this, they have a massive screen. Dude, do you have visuals? I don't Just, have just make, bunch, make a bunch of, like, video reels of the your I visuals should. for the album. You have so many visuals, dude. I have a lot of super they eight have footage. They have a massive LED screen behind the stage wait that's incredible okay it's insane you have to use it actually that's really cool i don't want to use visuals as like a safety net but there is i i've never i've never used visuals um for a live set but i almost feel like now if i were to do that it would be like a comforting like accompaniment to where like it kind of helps sustain that like not interest in the set, but like, it, it, dude, it, it does. Yeah. yeah. It makes it feel like a whole experience. It's like, it makes exactly. people like, dude, have so actually this fun. is great. I have a lot of good super eight footage. From dude, the first that's what I'm saying. And like for every song, it could just be like a 15 second loop. It doesn't even have to be like, dude, usually like sometimes people go up and their visual, you know, this, it's just like their logo. And even that's nice. But is it, it weird just, to have a visual that's like, like, BTS type stuff or like, no, like that's that's B, dope. B roll stuff. No, that's dope. You can okay. do, dude. I love when people have like, if anything, that's like next level. That's like, you know what I mean? Totally. I mean, at least in the type of music we make. I mean, if, if you make electronic music, there's a different bar. People like doing insane stuff. But like, if you're singing and dancing and you have a live band and you're doing and you have like BTS stuff dude, in the background, let's go. Then you're creating a universe. People will like love that. And dude, that screen at that venue is insane. I did. Did, did I show you the videos of when we played there in November? We didn't. OK, so we, I played a show there in November and like we didn't even bring our own visuals. Uh, the guy who was running the event, his name is Kev, Daddy Kev, brought in. This was that guy. the show that you did with um, St. Panther was on yes, the bill? Yes, okay, St. Cool. Panther. And uh, his visual guy, I think, is like the fly low guy or whatever. Just He does insane artists. I can't remember who else he does, but it's like totally insane. He had, dude, like the most insane. Because, they ha- again, it's an LED screen. It's not a projection. It's like a massive, like, state-of-the-art screen. You have to use it. It's Whoa. so cool. Make Stone So do it, dude. Okay. All right. Okay. So all I have to do is compile some like video files and then you can have someone like you know edit together a few loops and then you just like I don't know 
come to my show. Come see my visuals. August 30th at the Regent Theater. Absolutely. It's going to be super epic. Uh, if it's not sold out already, Duran Jones is like so dope. Uh, I opened for them a few years back. Amazing people. Amazing music. Hell yeah. Yeah. yeah it's going to be so good. Blake Ryan of Duran Jones Shout and the Blake. Indication. Shout out Snoobs. Snoobs. Uh, produced my record. Uh, along with Paul Cherry. So that's also really sentimental in this experience. But going back to my main point, last year was my first time uh, playing keys for some songs. And so it was wow. like uh, yeah. kind of a, a reminder of like, oh, wow, this like special relationship that I have with this instrument kind of challenges my confidence at times. Most of my set, I like to be without an instrument. Oh, actually, I'm really excited because this upcoming show... I'm opening the set by playing chimes. It's going to be a vibe. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. So, <laughs> yeah, no. Shout out to the piano. I'm really, really excited. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the piano every time on this ep- on this podcast. Um, dude, something else I wanted to talk about, and I think that everyone listening uh, can learn uh, about this from you, is... I I think of you as like a true like artist, oh, thank okay. You. And I'll okay. explain some of the, there's some things that you do that I that I can't do. Mm-hmm. And I want to explain what those things are, and I think that they're Give very. Birth. Well, that is true. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I have no response for okay, that. Sorry. Okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Just making the straight dudes uncomfortable <laughs> is like what I'm here. <laughs> okay. But Edit uh, that part. Out. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping it in. Uh, what? Okay, but <laughs> I can't do. I can't. I'm okay. So we're gonna edit this out. I, okay, edit sorry. it out. Okay, sorry. So no, no, no. I think of you as a true artist in a lot of ways. One of them, I think that anyone can learn from, is like it's hard to explain. But like, I have this idea that um, there's a difference between doing and being. Right? There's some people that do art. And there's some people who like are artists. There's some people that it's like having to climb a mountain every day. They have to like put everything together and, and amass like all this like effort and all these things and pile it up. And then they, they climb to the top of the mountain, but you live at the, but you live at the summit. Mm. Like you're just actually a really artistic person. Um, there's a lot of people that have to spend years and years developing their taste, developing like sounds in their head, uh, aesthetics, visually, sonically, all like all the things it takes to be an artist these days. You kind of do those things, but not it's not naturally. It did come from work and effort mm-hmm. because you spent your entire life listening to really dope shit. I don't know too many people that know as many records as Michi. She mm. knows the most music. Oh, thank you. She has perfect time, which comes from your dance background, I think. I did do that jam with you and Luke on New Year's Eve. Perfect time. She's got perfect time. <laughs> it's actually really freaky. No, thank you. Like you hear, you hear rhythm very well, which do a lot of musicians practice that stuff and they don't, they don't listen as well as you do mm. because that they, and it's evidenced by the fact that they don't have perfect time. Well, you have geez, perfect time. You. you play a little piano, so you audiate harmony well. You you know you sing in tune. There's a lot of vocalists that don't sing in tune. They and they practice it, but because you played piano as a kid, you, so Michi has all of these things that all of these skills that come from, I think, just like love of music, like ge- mm. genuine love of music. She dances, she plays piano, she's fucking on the beach rolling around. She's like, just, she's love, driving around in a car, blasting, blasting music, music way blasting too loud. all day. Yeah. She can do everything from singing <laughs> Latin pop music to uh, every Dom Kennedy verse on some of those albums. I can't remember which album yeah. is the one where you know, she knows yeah. like, like, she I can love rap. Dom, baby. Dude, like, like, I mean, she could probably rap if she wanted to. Um, <laughs> And so all that to say, there's a difference between doing art and like being an artist. Mm-hmm. And then I think you've achieved that. Thank you. Because I like, really appreciate that. Yeah, you just, you literally can just like be in the studio and like, you, you're one of those people who can vibe. Like you can just like. I do love it, to catch a vibe. 
I really appreciate you saying that. I mean, I feel like being in this world of like, you know, putting this album together, it's like one thing to have the music ready. It's another thing to like decide on like how you want to represent that visually. First of all, I'm like super grateful to have aligned with the other creatives I've aligned with that helped me build that world. Because when I'm working with like a, you know, a director for a music video and I'm trying to describe what it is, I do notice that I struggle sometimes to articulate, um, what it is that I'm feeling or envisioning for it all. But I will say that like what I am grateful for is the way that exactly like, you know, to me, there's nothing better than waking up. It's a sunny day, drink my water, go out in the sun, play some music. I have to listen to music within the first five minutes of being awake. Like music Whoa. Is, like, is this an actual rule? Or are you just not? It's not a rule. Right it's just like part of my existence. Like going through my morning without music is just like the oddest experience. It feels like you're watching a movie on mute. My life is a movie, and without music on in the first five minutes of me being awake, I'm looking for the remote, and I'm like turn the volume up that is the vibe of my life so I mean you know I, I yeah that, that's it there's there's a there's a song for every mood and it accompanies like every feeling that's inside and I think that it does contribute to like my existence and my connection like to my craft and just who I am as an artist I think that those are the moments in like my pedestrian lifestyle that contribute to like this vivid world of like when it's time to get in the studio, I've had a day of where like I, I set that tone and I'm like, but I'm not even aware of it. But subconsciously, these are moments where it's like it's fueling your soul to then be able to push that out. I don't maybe that's not articulated well, but that that's how I, I that's something that I really, really value. And like for me, I grew up you know, in a little bit of chaos and, you know, I, I've got anxiety, I go through depression. Um, and so I feel like, like one thing that I really, really value in my recent years of adulthood is being able to enjoy a moment of stillness and like self soothe. And that is like a really big thing for me is like, I'm going to allow myself to drink my coffee listen to this song. Maybe I want to smoke a little bit of weed at 10 a.m. and catch a good vibe. And like, wow, this moment feels really good. And growing up, I never really was good or had that opportunity of like stillness. So like it's it goes, it surpasses just like the aesthetic of living. It's like really like a, like a, a skill of like survival and also just like enrichment of life that I enjoy. I, I absolutely love that. That's actually another thing. Sorry, I'm going off. No, but it's a podcast. Go ahead. I need to learn how to like properly DJ. I mean, I love and I'm so appreciative of the times where I've gotten to spin Peanut Butter Wolf's collection at Goldline. Shout out to Goldline. Shout out Goldline. Um, oh, dude, you'd be such a good DJ. But I, re yeah, I really want to do that. You know, I want to. I love like being able to curate a space sonically because it brings up so much for people. You know, I've been at like a party yeah. where I just had friends over this past uh, weekend up where I live, up the coast, in a little beach town, and we, you know, made a fire. Smoke some weed, had a good dinner, some wine. <laughs> Smoke some weed. Smoke some weed. And then, you know, it's like you put on a certain song and then everyone's like in this like mood, you know, and suddenly they're having like vulnerable conversations. So it's just really special. Dude, okay. So there's so many things you just said that are so awesome. Uh, and I just, I, gotta, I just want to hammer this home to the people listening because... I, there, there, there's two ideas in this that I really love. One is immersion. Like, you know, the way that you talk about listening to music in the morning, it's like a movie, and, but, the, but, the, but it's on mute and you need to have it on and it's accompanying all these things that you do. I mean, like, this is somebody who thinks, who you literally live with it. You live music. I do. That's the second idea. I mean, I think if you want to do this thing well, 
it ha it's more than just learning scales and chords and you know songwriting it's like it's it's more than the technical part it needs to be a way of life for you and it needs to have a specific like you need to have a unique interaction with music like in your way of life that again leads to like this last idea of you know djing music for your friends and people just like catching a vibe and having a good time that's by the way very different from like how my music works for people and but equally valid and extremely important and by the way if you listen to michi's music you can tell that's like a big a big part of it it's about having fun it's like it's about like you know people getting together having a good time dancing having fun Definitely. you know um whereas like my music is tends to be more introspective etc whatever mm -hmm. but um yeah i think like that's 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 kind of although speaking i will to, say sorry yeah, if ahead. i may interrupt yeah, go ahead. august again really that, that you know thank you i feel like your last record you just put out not the trio one but yeah, the, it's okay be you yes it's okay be you <laughs> I'm thinking about the inside joke. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, it's okay, be you. I feel like you kind of really stretched out on that one. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like uh, maybe it's August again. I, I feel like I heard some like slightly like alternative influences. Yeah, that that was. Uh, yeah, that's what that one was is doing. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that that's like. That's that's partially your your influence actually. Oh. Is August again? There's there's I love two that track there's so two much. people that there's two people I think of uh, for that. Um, oh yeah. 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 You know, no. Yeah. I I. So as you know, introspective and maybe like in more serious light as your music is, you 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 also know how to have fun. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, you know I'm yeah I don't mean to like paint my music in one brushstroke there there's some different things i hit on but I, I think like in terms of you know yeah re regardless of whether or not it's you know an introspective thing or a nostalgic thing or a fun thing or a whatever i think it's just important to be like fully yeah just like fully immersed in music and and have a unique like the way that you brush up against it the way that it like the way that you you utilize it in your life and then also making music that's like relevant to that. Cause I think a lot of people it's like, they don't think very deeply about it. it, it even if it's not that it has to be consciously thought about, but like, I think some people it's just like, Oh, I'll make a song. Mm -hmm. And that's valid by the way, of course it is. But I think if, if, yeah, if you're not like really deeply in love with it and in love with it in specific ways, like in a, in a detailed way that, that you just described. And again, I think the way that you operate with music is not, this isn't like a, something you've strategized. It's not like you're like, Oh, I need to like do this to get better at it. You just naturally your desire to interact with music and literally from the first five minutes you wake up in the morning is like driving your, like, um, your connection to it. And then you're, you know, I just think, I think, you know, sometimes I talk to students and for example, they'll be like, I want to learn jazz. And I'll be like, cool. Do you listen to it? And they're like, no. <laughs> and I'm mm. like, what? Like, I, I feel like you got to mm -hmm. let your, let your passion and your, your heart and your ears and your, like, you have to let that guide you. And the people that do that well, whether or not it's formal training, whether or not it's theoretical, technical, whatever, like, those are the people that actually make music in a meaningful way. I mean, I feel like it's just the element of, like, soul. Yeah. You know? Yeah, is your soul, like, attached to this thing? Totally. Do you allow yourself to do that? You yeah, know? you know, growing up, I keep referencing my mom, and I know she's going to love that. But, you know, I growing up, my mom would always be like, and who put you in dance classes and who this, but you know what? My mother really contributes a lot to like my cultural exposure and my love for music. My mom was raised in San Francisco in the sixties, seventies. You know, she grew up, she saw Al Green live at the park with her friends. Wow. You know, she grew up um, in the heart of San Francisco during a very revolutionary time 
for the world, for music, for a lot of social matters. And I feel like, you know, her relation to music has really been infused and passed down to me. Um, you know, she is like a huge reason why I'm able to appreciate all types of music, you know. Um, so I'm really, really grateful for that. So I feel like also growing up in that type of environment where music was always playing in my home, you know, it, my mom is like a big fan of hosting parties. She'll be blasting Hector Laveau and Willie Colon, yeah. and then she'll have Curtis Mayfield on the next moment, you know, and then she'll be playing someone like Dean Martin later that night. I don't know. That's a bad example, but you I, know, love, I love Dean Martin. I though. do too. He just always makes me crave an espresso martini. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I was gonna. I was wondering, is Dean Martin <laughs> problematic? Why does he feel? Imagine if like canceling was a thing. Uh, let, let, okay, let's not sorry, cancel sorry. Dean Martin. I love Dean Martin. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's dude, some old. Eh? Dude, I love Dean that, Martin. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Dean Martin, dude. Dean Martin had a show. Do you know? You ever watched the Dean Martin show? No, dude. <laughs> D- the Dean Martin show has so many, like. There's so many aspects to it that I think are like instructive for like how to make art well. I really believe that. Oh, yeah. One of the, actually very relevant to this conversation oh. about like how to make art effortlessly, which okay. is kind of like another theme that I see like in this conversation so far. How to make art effortlessly. Dean Martin was the goat at that. First off, this man was hysterical. He was he had a he was a he, comedian, right? He had yeah, he had, a th- he had a, the Jerry. He was with Jerry Lewis. They were a comedy duo. And Jerry they would Lewis, have who's often considered like the funniest, right? like one of the funniest people of all time. Uh, yeah, he, he would sing and dance. And but here's the thing: Dean Martin liked to party. He liked to get fucking smashed. Oh, by the Who way, doesn't? he was in the Rat Pack with Frank Sinatra. Like, what are we yeah. talking about? Wait, and he's and the what's baddest his name? dude ever. Um, oh. uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah, Sammy and, Davis Jr. Uh, and then. Um, the comedian was um, was uh, Don Rickles, dude. The Rat Pack was, uh, dude. Okay, Dean Martin's amazing. Okay, so the Dean Martin show, I had a phase where I was really into it because I learned that, you know, not only was he getting fucking smashed for these shows, but they would have rehearsals. And this is live TV. And it was like a, it was like a, uh, variety show. So yeah, he'd do comedy, he'd do sing songs, he would, like he would read a monologue, he'd mm-hmm. do stand up, he'd do like everything. He would dance, okay? But they wouldn't he wouldn't show up to the rehearsals. So he would be like drunk live on air and like <gasps> reading a cue card, a guy with a cue card and he's reading the lines and and like misreading words and that was part of he was so charismatic and so charming. Yeah. That that was great television because he would just he would just get it wrong and laugh like oops and and the audience would go nuts because they would watch him just misread words and struggle and he knew he was like he did it well and he yeah and he would just like you know and he was a lady killer so he would just be be like like oops i messed that up and girls would laugh and think it's so funny yeah and and he was hysterical i mean he was just a absolute brilliant performer and a great singer too yeah great dude he, dude, he was in the rap pack, dude. He was a voice Frank of Sinatra my Frank Sinatra doesn't just let anybody take the mic from him and sing. You got to be like amazing. Yeah. And Dean Martin was amazing. Absolutely. Uh, that's, yeah, 100%, dude. Exactly. I love Dean Martin. But I, I think that, um, again, like that's a guy who was multi-talented. That's a guy who like, yeah, he just... I mean, it's not like he it's not like he wasn't disciplined. I mean, he spent like many years making comedy with Jerry Lewis. You you know, you don't get that gig unless you're like amazing. Yeah. But um, but yeah, he just like I don't know. He just like n- knew how to be in front of an audience and make people go nuts. I don't know. I I love Dean Martin. Yeah. I went through a phase where I was obsessed with the Dean Martin show. Really? Sorry, I just like went off. No, Dean it's Martin. okay. I mean, I remember, I remember seeing that, but I more so remember it as like an infomercial type of thing. Where he had like a, <laughs> like a Christmas special. It was always like campy and comfortable. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is an aspect to his. Yeah, it's he's very cheesy, yeah. especially by by today's standards. It's like, ugh, like yeah. you know, you would never. It's it, like your grandma's like favorite mug in her cupboard vibes. Yeah, the way that I like it also is paired with like I have to be aware, I have to be like thinking like, okay, this is like from the fifties and sixties. Totally. Like, 
Um, but anyways, one thing I wanted to like ask you though, cause you know, you mentioned like your mom, like, you know, being like a, 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 a you know, from the sixties and all that, like kind of low key, like a hippie girl, but you kind of have like a early seventies vibe. Oh, thank you. Well, my mom wasn't so much. Well, yeah, I mean, she grew up in that time and like definitely like, you know, dressed according to like that, that time. But that like, my I, mom's I like that nickname influ- in high school was Froggy. You know, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Absolutely. Mo- most of my family's from the Bay Area. My parents met in um, the Bay Area in the 70s, I believe. Yeah, the 70s. Um, yeah, definitely. I feel like my mom's like influence of how she was raised, again, culturally, uh, yeah, definitely has transfused me. So interesting side, personal fun fact, I'm adopted. And uh, I actually met my birth father when I was 22. And, you know, I also am like in this season where I'm like living in this beach town. I'm in my like Roxy era. You know, I wake up, I go to the beach. I just got into surfing. Roxy era. I know I'm like listening to Santo and Johnny or like Incubus. I'm like very much so in that era. And i uh, Okay, but all that to sorry, say, sorry, sorry. <laughs> all uh, that to say, I recently saw photos of my my birth father, and um, you know he lived in Hawaii for like eight years. He was a surfer. He just like got got he 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 made by in very funny ways out there. Um, but yeah, my dad was just like such a free spirit and I feel like I'm getting to know him more and more, even though he's passed. And it's funny to see how much like nature versus nurture energy, like my mother who raised me definitely, like I feel very influenced by her, but also it's interesting how so much of my dad's energy and his, I, we keep using this word, but his vibe, um, is also like transfused in, in like my being too, which is also exciting because like now that the first, uh, my debut record's done, I'm also now like imagining the world for the second record and it's kind of feeling, I don't want to say ambient, but I feel like, you know, it's coming at a time where I moved out of LA and I'm finding more like influenced by like, like heavy synth stuff or like. Um, new wave on it and it's like um, yeah now it's almost like I'm taking an uh, like ancestral piece of like my dad in Mm. the new project too I don't know dude our family our our, you know who comes before us our parents sisters brothers all that contributes it's it's really exciting so that's what's also like so beautiful about this time which honestly I, I know I've talked about it before but you are a huge reason, if not the reason, why I made a record. You know, I think I was I was telling you a while back about putting out a project that was more EP based, and you really, really encouraged me make an LP. to make an LP. So thank you for that. Oh yeah, you are a huge Thanks. light and support to many of your peers. Oh, so nice. not you were talking earlier about like you know different aspects of what you bring in your craft and how you're, you know, like tending to different skills and and weaseling their way through what you do. But I think that that's also a beautiful part of who you are as an artist is how you serve as a mentor. And I mentioned this off the record before we even shot this, talking about planning for this. One thing that I think we all can appreciate about Kiefer is that, you know, he makes himself accessible and genuinely wants to connect to his listeners, to his friends, to community. I don't like using the word fan base, but fan base, you know? And I think that's really special because a lot of artists these days Thank you. are... Are we getting a phone call? What is this? Someone's calling us right now. Oh, gosh, is it... We've got an incoming call. Do you want to take it right now? Sure. Hello? Oh. Accept, press one. Send a voicemail, press two. Hello? Hello? You're actually live on air. Hi. Can you hear us? Am I? Yes. Oh my God. Hi, it's Chel. How are you? (laughs) I just saw your video and I was like, I'm just gonna. I'm like sitting outside watering my tomatoes. Oh, you have tomatoes? 
Oh my goodness! I'm thank sorry, you. But hi. Hi. Thank you so much for calling. This makes me feel um, much affirmation and warmth in my heart. And I love that you, you said should, you're honestly. you're watering tomatoes because I actually just um, had tomatoes planted in my garden. That's incredible. Uh, How are they doing? They're doing pretty well. I'm excited to have this farm to table lifestyle that I wasn't able to explore in LA. Kiefer, I'm also speaking to you. Yes. Yes. It was crazy because Mitchie was like posting your stuff and I was like, I can't believe she knows Kiefer. What the fuck? No. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Me and Michi are really good friends. Absolutely. We're besties. Yeah. We met about three years, two and a half years. Well, we met six years ago. We met six years ago. Then we became friends ago. like two and a half years ago. Absolutely. That, that almost caused an argument last night when I said two and a <laughs> half instead of six. <laughs> We met through my first homie in Highland Park, Paul Castelluzzo. Shout out to Heather. He makes music under the name Heather without an A. Um, And I started hanging out with him and his homies, and he lived with Kiefer at the time. But any time I would come to the house... you'd been over to my house a bunch of times. I'd come over here a bunch and drink in really bad like vodka and tequila in (laughs) in your kitchen. Um, And yeah, and so then I I met uh, Kiefer through Paul, and then we reconnected years later. We both were on tour, chatted, and then a friendship was born. When you picked up, I was like shook. I was like, wait, I'm talking. I know, I know. (laughs) Yeah, we kind of put you on the spot a little bit, but uh, we really appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. Thank you so much. All right, bye, Charles. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Uh, Should we go to a few of these uh, voicemails now that we're here? Let's do it. All right, here we go. This is from Mariana in West Palm Beach. Ooh. Let me just pull this up over here. Oh, wait, is it? Hold up. This might be the wrong one. Let's see. <laughs> I hope this is the right one. No, I'm just going to hit play. And we're going to find out. <laughs> we're going to find out. I'm scared. Hey, what's up? No, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one, dude. We're not doing that one yet. That's you, isn't it? No, it's not. Maybe. No, it's it's not. Here we go. Hey, Keeper and Michi. My name's Mariana. I'm calling from West Palm Beach, Florida. And my question to Michi is, are there any reoccurring themes in this album? And how do you feel your sound or style has evolved in this body of work? I'm super excited about your upcoming album release, and I really hope that you don't forget about Florida when you go on tour. Aww. All right, send you all of my love. Bye. That's so sweet. Wait, I'm actually so sensitive. I get emotional hearing someone call and ask me a question. It's nice, right? It's so beautiful. Um, okay, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I feel like a recurring theme of this record is uh, like different stages of grief. Mm. Um, you know, something that I actually told someone on the label recently that they laughed at is like I'm working on decentering men but before I do that this project is like a really really hey, wait, before, before you go any I further before you go any further uh, <laughs> can we just talk about me for a second <laughs> <laughs> no but you know I feel like um, it's been like four, four years since I've released music so it was like this record repeats a theme of just processing the concept of letting go and all the emotions that can come up with that uh you know sadness anger there's a lot of me confronting like my worth um on this record but i would say it's i don't want to say it's a breakup record i think like if you're going through a breakup this record is definitely a value in that But yeah, I would say a recurring theme in it is, um, you know, releasing something and just different lights of grief. And also something that I've realized that I really appreciate about my music, both in like the experience of being the artist, um, executing it out, and also just like what my music um, induces upon my audience of what I've found by people sharing. Um, And just like sonically, the feeling is like a form of sexual empowerment that is really big for me. Um, 
And so, yeah, I would say that there is a lot of that on this record, too. Um, I'm going to just say it. My favorite lyric from this record that was actually co-written by my good friend Paul Cherry, Little Titties But the Ass So Fat. I'm going to go ahead and just let you know that that lyric is on the record, so do what you will with that. (laughs) But it's really exciting. I've also just, like, haven't written music. I feel like I've been playing safe I'm like so grateful for my, you know, opening season of releasing music, my Sugar Baby era. Real. Sugar Baby era. Sugar Baby era. I was era. a big Sugar Baby fan. Uh, thank you. You know, okay, well, I won't you take that. Me, baby, baby. <laughs> but yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. But it was like such a funny time to release music too, because I was like, you know, at the peak of like my release. And it was like everyone was in lockdown. So it was like filming a music video during COVID right. and like trying to connect with the world during a very restrained time of existing. You made an LP, dude. I know. I'm That's very, crazy. very excited. But you know what? This record you took the step. Oh, thank you. No, I'm, I'm so grateful. And it's amazing what like, you know, taking I like I appreciate artists like you who could just fucking pump it out I think for me like what I have valued in my evolution right now is like I feel like as artists we feel this intense pressure to constantly put art out and while I believe that there is like heavy value in that I think that there's also a beauty of allowing yourself to exist and like really gather what you're feeling and learn lessons and like this record that I'm putting out, you know, sheds light on, you know, a lot that had, that I've experienced by the hand of others, but also it's like a big exposure of things that I've had to learn in lessons in like my sometimes skewed view of things. All this heartbreak that I've gone through in recent years has also unfortunately led me to a place recently where I'm like, is it that all these people I've dated sucked or am I like also inducing a narrative consistently in my life? Sometimes you are the problem and it's not to say it's completely on me, but it's kind of like a, it's a maturity season. I feel like I started out in, you know, in like pop, which is like fun. And I want to like, I want to go back to making some fun pop songs, but right now is my moment to like, you know, dim the lights with my audience and, and mm. get and get real dude that actually i hear that in the record i have okay. i have heard it Thank um you. yeah from the cover art yet to be released I know, it's to the name to the just all the imagery Thank it is doing you. that yeah but yeah the You're last right. the last the lights few years. and getting real thank you yeah and the last few years have you know aligned me with my you know what what a dream to be signed to Stone throw. Stone so I'm throw. very, very grateful for deal. that. It's a very, very big grateful. deal. Yeah. Sometimes you lose yourself and then you're in life and you're in a tunnel and you're like, where the hell am I? Where did I end up? And then if you just keep holding on, you end up in a really beautiful space. And that's what I feel like life has really gifted me on with with on this project you know this is not just me like oh my god i'm putting out a record i'm so excited it sounds so cool it has this person on it i'm signed to this label this is honestly like as much as it's beautiful to like gift it to my audience it's a really really selfish experience too and like seeing like bearing the fruits of my labor getting to know myself a little bit more um and yeah just like uh Tapping in, if you will. Tapping in, if you will. If you will. Will. Um, should we go to one of these uh, voicemails down uh, here? Yes. Here we go. Let's see what happens. What's up, Michi? This is Trevor from Carpinteria, California. Um, I've kind of been going through a trying time. I discovered last night that my girlfriend is one of those cowards that hides her photos on This her is phone. you. I didn't go through them, obviously. She just told me that she does this. And I think that cowards do that. Anyway, our relationship's on the ropes. And if it doesn't work out, can we go on a date? Let me know. <laughs> wow, Trevor, think- thanks for the message. That's very interesting. Uh, Tyler, 
Trevor. Tre- Trevor. Um, that's a complete violation of privacy, man. Yeah. How do you feel about hidden photos, Michi? Um, I think hidden photos. Okay. Whoever is behind Apple these days, um, get a fucking real job. Okay. Am I allowed to curse? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think hidden photos are absolutely <laughs> oh, dang, you went, you went, come up with a better it. passcode. Own it. Don't be a coward. That's how I feel Don't about be a coward. Photos. Yeah. That's if you hide your photos, then you're a Basically, coward. Basically, Apple is contributing Wait. to our divorce rate. Some people are cowards. Absolutely. Shall we go through the next? Let's go to the next one. Hey, what's up? This is Nicholas from Carpinteria. What um, the heck? This I hear is you're all from you. Carpinteria. I was wondering if we could go out sometime. Let me know. Uh, we could like get a coffee, maybe, or maybe like an ice cream. Um. Yeah. Wow. That's two. You got asked out twice in a row. There. <laughs> This, you know what this is giving? This is giving Christmas Eve, and your parents have like hidden five gifts underneath the tree, and they're like, "Wow, Santa got you another one." That's what this is giving. Yeah. For the record, I might have been behind those last two calls. For the record, I'm not available. It's, yeah. But thank sure. you for your inquiry, Nicholas. Yeah, nice try, Nicholas. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I really liked Tre- Trevor's call about the hidden photos. You know what else we uh, we've talked about in the past? You know, we had this. We used to go on Twitch and talk about you know uh, relationship ish issues, if you know if you can call it that. But also, we have a there's a biological defect we both have. Bifid we both have bifid uvulas. uvulas. We have bifid uvulas. Bifid uvulas. I don't know if this is staying on the podcast, that, but the thing that hangs on the back of your throat, the little punching usually, bag, you, the punching bag at the back of your throat. Usually, it's a u. Your uvula is the thing that hangs. Yeah. Want to know something disturbing? I have a double loop. I have a double loop. That's that's called a bifid uvula. Look we this. both have bifid uvulas. Like this, it's like a little like upside down y shape. Yeah, it's like a w. Wait, let me see. Not right now. I just. No one's. They're not gonna see it. Wait, let me see. I just drank coffee, it's not gonna look good. Oh my god, that's the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Oh my no, my you. uvula doesn't look good right now. If you looking at my uvula was a photo, I would want to put that in my hidden photos right now. Yeah, totally. There you go. See, uh, five minutes later, circle. five minutes later, and now she's totally backing it. She's totally behind the, the hidden experiment. photo. You, the punching bag at the back of your throat. Usually, it's a U. Kiefer and I have a W. Or, or as I call it, an upside down Y. A W would be like... A W. Three, dude. A W is... Oh, oh, you mean like two. the negative space of a W? Yes. And this Wow, is that is a, a very interesting way of thinking. You, you're seeing letters as the negative space between the lines? <laughs> This is what I mean. This is what an artist, this is how an artist thinks. This is divergent thinking. Here's the why. The why? There's no way. What, what, Look, there's no w, way you got a 4.0 in high school. W. This is an insane oh, way to no, think. Oh, no. I was a hor- <laughs> horrible student in high this school. This is the most dyslexic way of thinking. Look. Wait, how do you do a why? Yeah, an upside down why. Like a why would be like this and then upside down. Look at the negative you're, space. You're thinking of the negative space of a W. <laughs> You think of letters as the negative space between the lines. Some people see the glass half that full. That doesn't even make any sense. I see the glass half empty, but I see the negative space as the fullness. So it's really all your own POV, okay? Wow, and I thought that this I and I thought that this bifid uvula thing was not going to go anywhere, and this has gone to a, one of the most interesting places. But what's it crazy have is gone. one time someone told me that if you have a bifid uvula, that's a sign of you being male. No, 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 no. It's not that. It doesn't. It's it's more common in males. Okay, I think it's because like, I grew I think up it's thinking like one in every. 20 i think i read and then for for women i think it's like one in every 100 or something like that it's like a slight yeah dare i say another reason why i am unique yeah and you as well 
I'm a little unique, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, <laughs> also, a couple of other things, just a little bit. Yeah. Respectfully. 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 I'm definitely neurodivergent for sure. Oh yeah, that's definitely. Undeniable at this I am point. too. I am too. I think uh, that's why we are such good friends. Why? Why we're drawn for e- to each other. Yeah, we Absolutely. do have that. We we both live very freely. Absolutely. Uh, when you lived here in LA, it was very easy for us to have a good time Absolutely. all the time because we were down at the drop of a hat to go do something fun and Teddy's talking. go harass people at Gold Lion or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, fun times. Some really fun times. I'm spinning at Gold Lion next Sunday. You should come. Next Sunday. Oh, I, I'm in there. That would be so fun. I'm spinning um, some records. Dude, uh, yeah. Um, so going back to that zone... I uh, am putting out a track, my first single, after a couple years. It's called If You Want Me, my latest single release. I'm really, really excited. Ooh, Mm -hmm. yeah, nice. Produced by Blake Ryan, co-written by Paul Cherry, and I. I'm really, really excited. Um, It has a music video, too. And uh, that is like something that I want to drop in here and announce and just talk about how excited I am. Yeah, let's let's get into it. When does it come out? Comes out uh, Tuesday, August thirteenth. So Ooh. be sure to listen to the track and watch the music video. It's a nice, uh, you know, picking up where we left off. I've always valued a DIY approach. This video is very fun to shoot. We shot it all in oh, my it's home a zone huge where I vibe. live. Big vibe. Absolutely. Very dope. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's the first of, of the new Michi era, and I'm really excited. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's basically talking about uh, getting toyed with being played and being sick of it and calling someone out on their shit and it's kind of posh it's got a well maybe i won't say too much but it has a voicemail moment on it which is like really fun to me a what a voicemail a voicemail moment? moment where i'm like you can hear my voice leaving a voicemail which was oh, like voicemail a voicemail moment yeah. And um, <laughs> we love a voicemail. Moment. We love a voicemail moment. Clearly, do you really need to just do voicemails all the time? I know. Actually, it's that's like great um, foreshadowing. I love that, dude. I, in fact, after this, I'll just show you how to do yeah. it. Yeah. You know, Michi. Look, she's been around the block, dude. She's gonna be. Uh, she's gonna be DJing over at Gold Line. Uh, if she drops into most bars in the area, people know who she is. Um, Dude, me, me and Michi, we've uh, definitely, uh, we've, we've had a, we've partied a lot. Yeah, absolutely. We've partied a lot. You were saying dude, that we, we went we, out we... last night. We got, I got, dude, I got drunk last night, actually. We went to a Korean barbecue spot last with night. With Dom. Dude, with, shout out internet boyfriend, my friend Dominic. Um, dude, we killed that, we killed a whole pitcher and there, it was a big pitcher, dude. It that was, was like, so it was good. The size of one of these monitors. We were so it's hungry. Huge. We sat down at the Jeez. first booth. We're ready. Our servers like starting the grill, and then it ended oh, yeah. up in this really funny situation where we all had. Yeah, to Yeah, the sit. grill didn't work, so we had they <laughs> they made us get up and move after they set down all of our plates. So they had to move like thirty plates. Thirty plates. <laughs> I was like a dude. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's going to be a good night at it's KBBQ so awkward to get when you have to and not, relocate. And not like we couldn't, like we didn't really help because. Here's an observation that I had genuinely. What do you do in that situation? You know? Here's a genuine observation that I had. Is it because it's not your place to tell them to say it softer that you as Kiefer Shackelford don't tell them to turn down their music? Because if you know anything about most KBBQ places, Blasting. it's usually like. Drake deafening. being blasted at a deafening volume. <laughs> and if there's anything that Kiefer Shackelford hates, it's music being played at a deafening volume. Yeah. So I'm very curious very as to how you were able, and this is not passive aggressive. I didn't even notice it Because last anytime night. you get in my car, you're like, Michi, remember volume. <laughs> uh huh. I'm like, I had fun once. I hated it. Is his vibe when he gets in my car. 
But why do you not ask them to turn it down at a KBBQ spot? I honestly didn't even notice it last night. I was so focused on the food. Korean barbecue so is frustrating. One of the, Korean barbecue is one of those situations where the food is so good that I actually might not notice. Nothing else matters. I did not notice the, the music last night. I was actually pretty surprised at the bill, too. I was like, that's a great price for all that food that we oh, got. Oh, dude, we were having Wagyu last night. So good. Dude, the Wagyu... That's the dude. If you go to Korean barbecue, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna make a, a night out of it, you might as well go premium menu, and get wagyu. Absolutely, dude. Also, I was I was grilling last night. I was killing it, dude. I've gotten so good at <laughs> Korean barbecue. I feel like there was a moment last winter where we got KBBQ like four times in one week. Yeah. You were on your <laughs> KBBQ like <laughs> streak. That's true. I love Korean barbecue so much. Uh, I mean, I love Asian food in general, but yeah, Korean barbecue is... Can't go wrong with that because it's an entire experience. I love love Japanese barbecue. I love yakiniku, okonomiyaki. Wait, Kiefer, I have to ask you. We've talked a lot about me, but what's going on in your world? What's going on in my world? What's going on with new music? Are you working I mean, on a record? What's going on? Yeah, I'm in the developing stages of an album. We are amassing beats and song ideas, amassing a cast list Ooh. Of, uh, of features and things. Vocalists? Uh, some vocalists. I'm also thinking about some like really hip instrumentalists to have on there. Oh, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I'm just like thinking about all the different skill sets that I have as an artist that I want to use and things I haven't used. And I think one of them is I do think I have one of the best um, contact lists. I think, I think I believe it. Um, I'm very blessed to know a lot of really amazing musicians and uh, I'm just trying to come up with some combinations of musicians that would never exist, you know, and, uh, and and gonna do them in a thoughtful way. That's really interesting. So that, that's really the goal of, of this record. So we are in the developing stages of that. But um, you know, I probably spend three or four hours every day, either you know b- between sessions, making stuff at home, and just honestly, a lot of texts and phone calls and emails, dude. Like it's required me to like really like follow up with people and bother people and make plans with people and put things in, you know, that does take a little bit of, you know, uh, persistence to do those things. Uh, So I spend like three or four hours a day on that. I spend two or three hours a day on this, uh, this, there's really three parts to this. There's the actual making of the podcast, like we're doing right now. There's the editing phase, which takes another hour or two. And then there's also another hour or so of, yeah, I'm just like going through my contact lists trying to book people it's a busy time a lot of people aren't around so i'm trying to figure out who i can pull up to the house i locked you in that was exciting um, oh yeah thank you for having me and Anna. um yeah so so wait so yeah, that's this what new I'm doing. record and then, and then i'm just chilling honestly i'm trying i'm trying to be healthier this uh 12 hours after eating an unbelievable amount of Korean barbecue and beer and finishing it does picture. not ring very true. However, I have been smoking less, which for me is the main thing. Absolutely. I can't, I just can't smoke weed anymore. Really? I can't. I just not, 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 um, consistently. Okay. Yeah. I course. can do it every once in a while, but I can't, I can't smoke like two days in a row. Yeah. I uh, dude, I get so fucked up. I would say I smoke weed right now, like twice a month. Yeah, I'm, I'm going back to more, microdosing shrooms. I just I just ordered another box. Nice, we love that. Yeah, shout out uh, Celo Delic. Uh, you can look him up on Instagram. That's Celo spelled P S I L O dot D E L I C. Um, they make these gummies that are how good are they, Michi? Honestly, they're so good. Is it Celo or Silo? Silo Delic, Celo. Well, it's psilocybin, C- so I would think, I would think Cilo. Cilo, yeah. That's right. But, um, yeah, dude. And this is not even a paid ad, but Michi can confirm. These gummies they make are... Incredible. I tried them for the first amazing. time through Elijah Fox. And I've never shroomed before. I'm not like, I don't want y'all to think I'm like a guy who yeah. has like a high, a high tolerance yeah. and I can just like... 
you know, knock out a couple grams, no problem. Go to Venice I've, Beach, you might run into Kiefer Shackelford on the boardwalk. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, I never, I never take shrooms. I, I had never once taken shrooms before this. We should, you I know, we should do someday. We should take... And I've taken them a hundred times. I've never been too high. Not we once. should take some gummies and listen to Lil Raji. That would be nice. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the perfect pairing. Dude, yeah. So I need to get back into that because, like, weed was kind of like my way of like, yeah, altering my reality a little bit, getting a little more heady, getting more emotional, more, you know, analytical. Mm -hmm. Like I get like analytical, like emotionally mm -hmm. in a weird way. Mm -hmm. I get really, I get high. And I like to think about like the aesthetic of my existence and then heady is it existentialism. Yeah. And I just make music about that, you yeah. know, um, that's not the only way I make music, of course, but it's definitely like a subgenre of what I do. My first two records were like all that. Um, I love to do that, but I can't smoke anymore. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Does this new record seem like like community vibe? Like it seems very collaborative. Yes. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Are you um, like feeling like your heart is open right now? You like want that experience? Like what's going on? Um, what ca what called you to put out a I record mean, like this? Yeah, in a sense. I mean, I, you know, I would like to think that um, my heart was somewhat open before. It's just different. I mean, it's not even a heart thing. It's mm -hmm. an effort thing. I, it's so easy to make an album oh, by myself. Oh, okay. It's wow, that's so, so wild. So easy. Are, no, it's way easier. But for someone like easier. me, because well. then there's just you don't there's zero lag time. There's not like oh I'm I gotta wait for him to mix that thing and I need so and so to retract the verse on the thing and what a special uh, they could just skill, send man. me those stems. I've been waiting four days for those fucking stems. Been two, waiting two weeks for these stems. Like nah, bro, everything is everything. There's zero latency on any. You know what I mean? So making an album solo is like, dude, I could make an album in two weeks if I wanted to. I'm not even, that's not even an exaggeration. That's how long it takes. And as long as I have a huge bank of beats to go through, which I have, I make one every day. So I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, I mean, thousands of beats over the last like 10 years. So like, you know, yeah, it's like really easy for me to like, just, I could just like make an album at any point, but that's not the goal. The goal is not to make an album at any point. The goal is to make you know, a good one with my favorite stuff and one that's interesting and fun and magnetic and dynamic to me. So, um, so if anything, doing a collaborative record is more work. It's way more work to me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm already like, damn, this is like, cause you know, it takes a long time. Like when you're collaborating with people, it take, takes people a while to get back to you cause that's not their project. Totally. It's, if it's yours, it's, it's not theirs. And either you have to, you have to, yeah, you got to make a beat that they want to be theirs. And once it feels like it's theirs, then the, then they start moving quickly. Totally. But until then, it's kind of hard to, you know, yeah, you got to make, you got to find, I, either you got to book the day and they come in the room and they make the music with you and that can take a while or you got to send them beats and it takes a while till you find the right one. So... Yeah. It does well, teach a you a lot of patience and it's taken a while. Humility. Yeah. Working with other people, getting them on your time. Totally. Well, Dan, yeah. I'm excited to hear that. Yeah, I uh you know, I've yeah, I've I've always wanted to have my records do this. I've uh you know, I've I've made music with vocalists before, but usually it's like on their project or um yeah, so th this is so this one I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I need at least like six or seven like real songs Hell with yeah. like a really interesting and I, but I want like every song to be like have an insane artist like list. Well, you showed me one every already. single one like boom 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 like big yeah. interesting weird names you know yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome that's awesome yeah. i know you showed me one demo recently of course fire every vocalist dream like me as a vocalist i hear that i'm like oh do you have a mic so i know yeah, it's we're gonna, gonna be we're good. gonna need a michi fichi <gasps> speaking of michi fichi a michi fichi a, kifi, a michi kifi fichi possibly expect that in the near future oh. we'll see We'll see. The first of its kind. The first of Might its kind. Might be on the horizon. Why am I sitting like this? I don't know. Are you comfortable? Uh, is that, yeah, it's really is that comfortable, comfortable for you. Yeah. 
But yeah, all good things, you know. It's really, really exciting time. I feel like going back to the very, very first part of what we were talking about, which is like a sense of effortlessness, your connection to your art really changes once you realize that you just need to stop trying. Mm. I feel like I've been so stiff in my craft at, up until this point. And I still struggle with, you know, certain things that I need to get better at and anxieties. Yeah. But I'm also trying to let go of the fear. The fear. The fear. The fear. And just be like, you know what? This is unapologetically me. And this is what I have to say and offer. This is what I want to make. This is what feels true to me. And just, just being that, you know, and, and not overthinking mm. the process. Because I think a lot of times up until now, I've been trying to do the artist thing and be the artist thing. And now I'm just like, oh, I need to just stop trying and just just do, you know? Yeah. Just verb out. Just step in, step into the role. I think you've done that very well. I think it's a you. perfect place for us to, to sign off as a very... A, very nice closing thought um thank you so much for coming on i'm proud thank of you, you. Keeper, i love you. you love you too and um ladies and gentlemen this has been michi what what is this someone called us but then gave up coward 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 thanks so much you guys for for uh, tuning in thank you for having wherever me, you are Katie. please make some noise for michi Thank you so much. Excited to share new music. Go listen to my latest track if you want me. Check out the music video. Come see me live Friday, August 30th at the Regent opening for Duran Jones. Don't be a coward. And the indications. Don't be a coward. (laughs) Don't be a coward. Don't be a coward. Bye. Bye.